I caught you, didn't I? <laughs> well, you know, big man, big mo. You like this nice cold morning? So I just walked out here to start a video, and uh, big mo was standing right here. He was fixing to dig, even though it's like 30. It's in the 30s right now, like 34 degrees. The big man, when he gets in the sun, it don't matter how cold it is, he usually gets hot. So he'll go run back here to the back of the house in the shade and he'll dig a little hole and uh, lay in it to cool off. I don't know what it is about him, but he just loves staying cool. So we're gonna come out here. Um, you guys know I've been saying it in a lot of the recent videos. We are on baby watch with our goats. So yeah, we're gonna be uh, having some new kid goats anytime um from today today is the 17th and uh these goats are due about the first of march and um if you guys know anything about animals even people you can have babies early or sometimes they carry them a little late and there's mr leesky what are you doing mr leesky he said hello dad what do you know he's a good boy and there's miss cora pretty girl cora and we're going to talk about some stuff this video is going to be about all about you guys and these goats in your trash pile that you got. Yeah, let me in here and we'll do a little talking. Just don't knock it down. You do weigh as much as I do, and you're taller than me, I think. Well, almost. I gotta give Cora a hug. What do you know, girl? What do you know, girl? Give him a hug. Yeah. I know, you gotta have all the attention, Mr. Leesky, man. So, we're gonna come out here and we're gonna. Okay, I wanna show you something real quick. Well, hold on. This is what they call a death nap in goats. Hold on. I gotta catch this. So, you see the white goat right here? She hears me coming through the gate. She heard me talking. She can hear me right now. Um, a lot of farmers will walk out in a pasture, and a lot of times you'll see a goat just like this laying all by themselves, and it's because they doze off. And it feels so good sleeping in the sunshine that they don't care. They just doze off and fall asleep. They wake up and the herd has already moved on. Well, if a farmer comes out here and they see that goat by itself, it startles you and you just <laughs> immediately uh, perceive it as that goat being hurt or dead. Because when they're sleeping, they just don't look like they're moving much. And so we'll go ahead and start talking about this goat. Everybody's... I don't know where they're going. They're starting to go that way for some reason. I guess I'm being too loud for them. Running their, running their mid-morning uh, snack. But you can see how wide this goat is. That's a Spanish goat. She's going to have babies real soon. She's got a, her udders filling up on her. <clears throat> She's always a really good mom. That goat right here, that's another Spanish goat. You can see how wide she is. She don't quite have the udder as the one we just looked at but uh she's a good mom that's 1063 she's usually friendly hey little girl you gonna let me pet you today yeah uh well i was going to until leesky came leesky said pet me dad not the goats let me pet you let me pet you she's usually pretty friendly a lot of times if you stand out here long enough and the dogs ain't around she'll come up to you and Want scratched and all that type of stuff so just kind of looking at the herd <clears throat> there's another Spanish goat right there the one with all that cashmere on her um, she's pretty wide this one right here that is a Kiko that's a Kiko a full Kiko and she's bred back to the New Zealand Kiko so excited she's she's one of the prettiest goats uh, that we had when she was a baby her colors of course all the colors change on all these goats um, Whenever they're first born, you know, they have all these flashy colors and, you know, they're like, oh, that goat's awesome. It's going to look awesome when it gets bigger. And I'm not saying that she's not beautiful and pretty. It's just what they look like when they're first born compared to what they look like as adults. It changes big time. Well, you know, little, little girl. There's one of the kids from last year. One of the other kids from last year this one right here she was one of my favorites too um she's growing she's growing nicely and everything but when she was born if you guys remember she was white and she had brown black spots she had a ton of moon spots on her she was just a beautiful goat and now you can't really see those moon spots and stuff she's still gonna be a beautiful goat she still is but all those nice little spots and stuff when they're nice and slick and first born 
you just can't see them hardly anymore. Oh, you know, Tawny. That ain't Tawny. That's a uh, Ginger. Ginger, she's she's nice and wide. She's looking good. She's a Kiko. Well, you know, Ginger. But this one right here, she might be the biggest. This is one of our Spanish. I don't know if she's the biggest or not. She's one of our Spanish. That's 123, the orange tag. And you can see how wide she is. She's a, she's a pretty big old girl. And she's got a nice bag. Utter, whatever you want to call it. I call it bag, utter. Some people don't like that, but it is what it is. So, just kind of looking around. This one, this black Kiko right here is probably the biggest goat we have on the farm. Um, you can see how much taller she stands. These are the Spanish goats right here. These four black ones. And you can see how much taller this Kiko stands next to the Spanish. And even some of the other Kikos. She's a big goat. She's a big old goat. And I bet she's got... But she's got some healthy twins, and she has a nice udder. Can you see how uh, full her udder is? Let me see if I can zoom in on it. She's got, yeah, she's uh, she's ready to have babies. Um, everybody is looking pretty good. Um, some of these yearlings, they're, they might or might not be bred. Um, we do run the buck with the younger ones, and if they get bred, they get bred. If not, it's no big deal. It just gives them another year to grow. That goat right there, that's a little Kiko goat, the little tan one. She's an awesome looking goat. Um, she's a yearling from last year. She's growing really nice. That one right there, the brown one, she has some awesome moon spots on her. She, you can still see her moon spots really well. So when she gets big enough, I don't know if she's bred or not either, but when she gets big enough, she'll, uh, she'll definitely have some, uh, really good kids with some color what are you chewing on there girl this goat right here has the biggest horns of any goat we got on the farm she's a pretty big uh kiko as well she got some big horns on her let me see your horns turn your head around here there you go that'll work you guys check out her horns they are some cool looking horns on her they kind of grow up and then they kind of go out she's really cool looking but she's got a nice udder on her and she is wide as a truck. She's a big girl. Then you got Miss Cora. She's like, oh boy, what are you going to talk about me, Dad? She's like, just pet me. Just pet me, Dad. Oh, where's pretty girl? Yes, sir, he is. Let's see what Mr. Lee. Oh, yeah, he can't stand it. Yo, someone else is getting loving. I guess I'm going to go over there and run it for him. Can't you ever just let someone else have attention? Huh? He's gonna stand right over Cora. He's gonna stand right over her like it's nothing. <laughs> Goofball. I love both you guys. You guys are both awesome dogs. You know that? You're awesome dogs. Yeah. Let's see if your teeth are still white. I oh, can't see. Cora said, Come pet me, Dad. Don't let Leesky bother you. Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. He won't let me. See? Look, I'll walk on this side and I'll go pet her. He won't let me get near her. What is your deal? Why are you guarding Cora? Are you guarding Cora or what? Cora? Oh. Get back. Get back. Let me pet Cora. Let me pet Cora. Where's a good girl? Okay. 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 He's like looking at the camera and stuff. All right. So, as you can see, we are in the small field of our pasture. We have, uh, we have, let's see, what do we have? We have, well, we got over here, this is about two acres total, and then we have an acre, about a half an acre, um, three quarters of an acre hog pen, and a quarter of an acre hog pen. All the gates are open. There's two ponds, there's a pond in each paddock over there. That's our goat pens. Uh, we built the ponds strictly for the pigs, but we haven't been raising pigs this year, or last year, um, because feed prices and everything was so high. We are gonna be getting pigs this year, but anyways, we leave the gates open. The goats have been cleaning up the pig pens and all that because, you know, I haven't had to brush hog any more since we've had all these goats. They just do an awesome job of cleaning up, keeping everything manicured, all the weeds and all the bad thorns and stuff like that. The goats take care of that. So we leave the gates open. So over here, there's two acres total and they've got shelters in every corner of this place. There's one right here. And then there's a big barn. So any of these goats, they want to have babies by themselves. 
they can go into these shelters they can have their babies it's still winter time um, these are very hardy goats the cold the heat nothing bothers them it's not going to bother the babies um, a lot of times the goats will kind of go off by themselves when it's time to kid and they'll have their babies now last year if you guys followed us last year mr leesky that was his first year being around newborn kids and it was awesome. We got to witness several of the births with uh, Leesky witnessing his first births around the goat. And he laid by that first goat that came into labor and just sat there and watched her and just guarded her. And he was still young. You know, he's like right at a year old. And he guarded her and he did not mess with those babies at all. He didn't get too close. But after she had them and she kind of started cleaning them up. And after she had both babies, he got up and he actually helped her clean them up. And he had already built that bond with that mama goat. And she knew he wasn't going to hurt those babies. So she didn't like try to headbutt him or keep him away from her baby. She let him help clean up the babies. Now, this year we got a little different scenario. <clears throat> we know Leesky is proven with uh, baby goats and when the mom's going through labor and everything. Because we're not going to separate our mamas. We're not going to separate the dogs. This is where we need the dogs. Um, you guys know we live... It's very wooded where we live. There's tons of predators around and stuff like that. Whenever these mamas go into labor and they start having these kids, you know, there's all kinds of stuff on the ground, the afterbirth, all that scent. It stirs up the predators, mainly coyotes in our area. And they start smelling that. They can smell for a long way. They're very keen sense of smell. And what they do is they'll smell that and they'll pick up on it, a scent downwind or whatever. And they will try to come and find what that, because they know um, with like wildlife, deer, any anything that's having babies or whatever, predators are always a concern. Well, our goats, if we didn't have these dogs, the coyotes would just be in here thick. They'd be taking out these goats left and right. But especially at kidding season, that is when all those scents and everything's going. The coyotes can hear the baby kids. You know, if a kid falls asleep and the mama gets up and wanders off or something and that kid wakes up, they're going to start crying. It's just what they do a lot of times. And the coyotes hear that and they say, oh, there's a kid, there's a newborn little kid or a calf or something. Let's go get it. And they'll come and get it. So that's where these guard dogs come in. And you can see right now they're getting their ass because they know these mamas are fixing to have babies. But the true test, going back to where my original story is, is going to be Cora's first time with these new kids. Um, we have had a livestock guardian dog in the past. It was well before our YouTube years. And uh, it was a common door dog. And it was about 12 to 14 months old. We started having kids. And that, or actually, let me back up. We had sheep at that time. We had Dorper and Katahdin hair sheep. And those ewes started having lambs, and that dog was so protective over those lambs, it would gather up all the lambs that were like a day to a week old, and it would keep them right there together, and it would just lay on top of them, and it stressed the mamas out. The mamas would try to go get the babies, so we, did, we had to get rid of that dog. It didn't work out for our farm, but that is what we're going to do with Miss Cora. We got we to gotta watch her. Um, you just never know how these dogs are going to react to something like that. She's never been through it, so we're going to have to keep a close eye on her. She's not aggressive or anything else um, towards the goats. She's bonded with all the goats. She sleeps with the goats all the time. So I think she's going to be just fine. Uh, hopefully she'll have like a motherly instinct to these little kids. And, you know, she'll want to lay with them and stuff like that whenever, whenever they're just kind of resting and stuff. But she's so far she is an awesome dog. Her and Leesky both are awesome. But when these kids come, that's going to be the true test. Because she's still a puppy. She is about 13 months old now. She is 13 months old. But she's still a puppy. And, you know, puppies, they'll play until they're about two years old or so. So it can be a concern. And it, it can be stressful. Um, you guys know puppies, dogs, they like to play. What is more enticing than a group you see how many goats we got so you can imagine how many kids we're going to have on the ground and they were all bred about the same time so these kids are going to start coming all about the same time so you can imagine having 20 or 30 kids or 40 kids running around playing because once they're a day old they start jumping they start running they start chasing each other well who does that entice it entices these puppies 
and they'll start chasing them sometimes they'll bite on their back legs they'll bite their ears and stuff like that and you don't want that so that'll be something that we got to watch and uh I'm not too concerned about these mamas um, going through the labor process. We have not had to pull any of our um, kids from any of these Kiko or Spanish goats. I'm not saying we'll never have to, but we so far in the last four or five years of raising Kikos of Spanish, we haven't had to assist in any of the childbirths with these goats. So that's that's been a that's been a game changer for us. They're super hardy. They're great mothers. And uh, one thing we're going to do this year, I was talking about you guys, this is two acres over here. Well, that's, that's about 12 acres over here on this big field. That's all one big field. They have access to the barn both ways. In the old days when we just had Daisy, if you guys remember our last livestock guardian dog, uh, she was an Anatolian. We would actually close off the barn and keep the goats in this two acre paddock and they had access to the barn, but they couldn't go to the big field because these spanish goats right here guys these spanish goats in particular they kind of have a little bit of a wild hair to them they they originated from a ranch down in texas like thousands of acre ranch and uh they're pretty much free range down there so what they would do is for you know for the last hundreds or so years that they've been raised down there They'd go out in the wild and they'd just have their babies wherever they were and they'd find like brush or something to get in like mesquite brush or whatever. There's not a lot of woods and trees and stuff down in uh, Texas at this particular area. I can't remember if it's East Texas or West Texas. I think it's West Texas, Southern Texas, whatever. But anyways, these goats, they, these Spanish goats, they just, they would hide their babies and they didn't have interaction with people or something uh people would only come around and check on them like once a month or something they don't feed them they're just they thrive on their own and that's that's uh just the genetics we have spit it out <clears throat> i can't talk very good so uh that's what i'm trying to say is we used to keep these spanish goats in here every time it was childbirth time because the first year that we had them they started kidding and the mamas would go and we wouldn't even know where they were they'd hide in brush piles they'd get under these trees and stuff they'd have their babies and then the mamas would actually leave the babies and they'd just go back every so often to feed them and at that time we had dozer piles and stuff because we had our place cleared off a little bit and the mamas would leave the babies right there by those brush piles and the babies would get up all up in there and then the mamas would just kind of leave them and it just kind of scared us but they're great mamas um this year we're not going to block that off because now we got two livestock guarding dogs you can see she's uh ready or she's she's sleeping but i hope she's ready for this um they are great protective dogs and i know leesky's tried and true but this year we got two so what i'm trying to say is when you only have one livestock guardian dog on a bigger pasture or whatever they have to protect the mamas but if there is kids out in the woods or something where you know the mamas want to leave them there away from the other herd they can't be in uh, both places so now we got two dogs um if the baby's out there crying or something a lot of times these dogs will work in tandem one will go out there and stay with the baby or go check on it whatever and the other one will stay with the herd because these predators are smart they will try to trick these dogs into chasing one of them you know way back over here and at the other time these other coyotes in the pack will jump the fence or go under the fence and they will come after the herd while they know the dog or dogs are away from the herd so a lot of times these dogs know that they're just smart and one will stay with the herd and one will go off over where the baby crying goat is or whatever so anyways that's enough jabbering um i just want to come out here every so often we're going to do uh we're on baby watch i mean any day i do a new video uh we might be bringing you guys some babies these this this girl and this boy they're getting the rest they're gonna be busy here pretty soon so anyways just a little update on that um you guys know we've been we've been putting the, the hay bales out here so they can just eat as much as they want you can see everybody everywhere we've had a hay bale the dogs like to dig up sticks and drag them up here and just kind of leave them um we're not going to be putting out probably not going to be putting out hay bales just sitting on the ground anymore because what will happen is the goats eat so much around the bottom and then it gets top heavy and then the goat will just or the hay will fall over and when you got 
a bunch of little baby kids on the ground when you have these hay bales up even the big goats they like to lay around it because you know they waste some it drops on the ground the babies and the mamas will lay around that hay bale and then eventually it's gonna fall over and it falls over on your little fresh kids and it's probably gonna crush them so we got the hay feeder in the barn I'll kind of pan around over there and show you guys if you're new to the channel we got that hay feeder there I'll be getting a hay bale put in that pretty quick and that's how we'll start feeding our hay um, they still got a lot of hay left over there on that one but it's already fell down so it's not a concern but I'm guessing a lot of these mamas will probably lay on some of these uh, old hay bale feed spots to have their babies because it's nice and warm and it's dry. So anyways guys, uh, that's it for today. Stay tuned because like I said, every day I come out here, it might be something new. We might have a baby on the ground anytime. And I know, guys, and I know you guys love seeing the new baby goats on the farm and everybody's wondering like I am how is Cora going to react and how she's going to do with the babies so subscribe if you're not subscribed leave a comment down below like this video and we'll see you next time You know, Cora, pretty girl.